um, some of the articles um, for today's lecture. So I have here, uh, yeah, that's the article. Let's show the questions. So maybe we start with the continuation of the um, talk which Costas uh, gave um, about taxonomies and talk a little bit about the first, uh, the, the paper which um, was done with uh, by by Simon, so you you know that paper quite well. Um, so what was the main um, yeah main point a apart from that they yeah, are the the slides that you've presented. What what else do you, what else can you say about the article? What was the main message of the article? Actually, it was mainly a position paper. Mm -hmm. uh, and, yeah, describing serious games field and the games for health field and uh, gamification as well. So it was a generic article. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, the categorization was a highlight. Mm -hmm. uh, the cognitive, physical, and uh, social emotional. Mm -hmm. uh, Again, the presentation of uh, the master quiz uh, uh, game as well. Uh, just good to have something, you know, a uh, practical uh, example, mm -hmm. the case study. And uh, yeah, after that, uh, and of course, yeah, the, the challenges, yeah. But uh, what's the challenges? In, in, in health research, where he, he mentions some things that were mentioned earlier. Uh, especially during the paper. Uh, and now, what was the main point? Mm, I think it had many points. <laughs> That's very result. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's a large paper, so. Yeah, start from games for health, and it has practical example. He's going into the problems, so mm -hmm. it's a very good overview of the games for health paper. And so categorization as well. So when when we sort of discussing games for health, uh, it is possible to approach it from two different perspectives. So uh, at least, so one is from the health perspective mm -hmm. of. Um, health professionals using games as a tool to achieve certain things and then measuring it of how that has been achieved. Mm -hmm. And then you can approach it from the games designer point of view, trying to achieve certain things in the games yep. in for health and then how they ma ma manage that. Yep. So how, yeah, how, how we do both, how can you match uh, these two um, sides of the story in research. So we, we have that discussions earlier as well, especially for games for education. But I think it is necessary to kind of have um, professionals from both of those disciplines yeah. doing research together. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're missing completely part of the picture. Yeah. Yeah. Because the, the health researchers, they don't know enough about games mm -hmm. to make um, meaningful research in, in that field mm -hmm. and it's similar for the games researchers not knowing enough yeah. uh, health issues and, and how the research is there. Yeah. So yeah, that, that yeah, I quite like the paper. I mean it, it does cover quite a, a spectrum of, of things um, and it highlights some of the uh, main areas for investigations and so on. But I, I kind of thought that that was a little bit missing, like the, the bringing um, both of those groups together is necessary for making uh, the, the research complete, uh, in a sense. Yeah, it was 
more based on the game design. It was yeah, it was more from the game perspective. The game perspective. Um, yeah. All right, so um, let's go through the through the questions for that one, perhaps. So by making a beneficial activity into a game, you introduce extrinsic motivation for that activity. How can this uh, affect the intrinsic motivation? It can break it. <laughs> yeah. Do you know? Yeah. It kind of reminds me of a paper read the, uh, of the time to eat um, mm -hmm. paper the, where they were eating for this pet, mm -hmm. and uh, when that was over, they were eating for the pet anymore. <laughs> so yes. They would go back to their old habits. So that's a, it's not a good thing. Yeah. So, I think that's uh, you know you can destroy the the long term effect. Mm -hmm. So how yeah I mean that that is an open question for many types of games mm -hmm. uh, and many times of gamification systems where you try to extrinsically motivate some behavior, but then inadvertently you might be interfering with the intrinsic motivations of people doing that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it is, yeah, it's an open research question. Uh, often what helps is to let people do the activity as if there was no extrinsic motivator. Uh, so to continue doing it for their own sake. Yeah. Um, so there were, yeah, we discussed that earlier. There were studies about children in the kindergarten painting, for example. and They've done a study where uh, they selected two groups, and um, one group was rewarded for every painting the kids did, and the other group wasn't. And then after a while, the kids who were rewarded were painting more because they had extra motivation to do so. But after the reward was taken away, they were painting less than they were painting before the experiment. So they were painting less than the average people markets in, in, in the other group. Um, so the, there, there is definitely an interference between the extrinsic and intrinsic motivators. Um, in a way, it reminds me of people saying if, they, if someone turns their hobby into their job and they say that it ruins it for them. <laughs> That's right. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the recycling <coughs> system example. It's uh, the Norwegian recycling system. It's one corona and uh, with the bottles, mm -hmm. that uh, you do recycle because you want to, let's say, let's save the environment, blah, blah, blah. Uh, mm -hmm. But if you, you actually introduce an extrinsic motivator, money, mm -hmm. <laughs> then uh, you may actually interfere with the intrinsic motivator. I think if that was removed, uh, it would change dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> Probably yeah. lots of people would not do it. At least they would, a while. If they would throw the bottles away. Mm -hmm. Most That's likely. And they still lose everything. <laughs> but, but I think an interesting question here is um, the, um, I don't know whether you call it an extrinsic uh, motivation, but, but if you, uh, like in uh, sports, if you don't compete against others, but you compete against yourself, and the game is to beat yourself, mm. that, that seems to be uh, quite an intrinsic yeah. motivator. Whether you can call it an extrinsic, an extrinsic one, that's all. I don't know, but, but I mean, you can set up, because I think well, the, uh, the rewarding system here, I think it, if it's too competitive, it's too much linked to your uh, results compared to others, mm -hmm. I think you have this effect. But, but if it's strong, because I think the, the weight loss programs in mm -hmm. which you are to be a little bit better than you were last month, or the running or whatever, in which the scale is to improve a little bit, mm -hmm. be a little bit better. I think that's what we want to do with, with the games for health. We would like them to be a little bit better, mm -hmm. not compared to others, not to, to some external measures, but more to the, uh, to the 
the internals. Yeah. Now, whether that's the extrinsic or intrinsic, that's, that's a different question. Or that's a good question, I guess. Mm -hmm. A lot of games, uh, sports games, do have one of those. Yeah, that's kind of what you're talking about. Exactly. Yeah. But then at the same time, you meet up and you uh, you fight some others. And so this is in the training session, and then in the real competitive setting, you fight some others. Uh, and then mm -hmm. you kind of, yeah. I guess, drop a little bit of that. It, it, in a sense, it is an extrinsic motivator, but with the motivator not being able to go away. So you can't turn that off, like the pet example. But it's not, yeah, I wouldn't say it's an intrinsic motivator in itself. Yeah. But it's kind of well aligned with your intrinsic motivations, right? So, yeah, that might be a, a, a good way to re, um, restate the problem and yeah, provide some feedback. Because uh, here I think it, it, uh, it's probably more well aligned with, with sports mentality, in which they're saying that the athletes who are able to focus on the job, mm -hmm. the performance, not on the outcome, have a large, much larger chance of actually winning because if they do a perfect race, they'll win. Mm -hmm. If they are thinking about winning, they may not be able to do the perfect race. So, mm -hmm. so it, it's, it's where the focus is. And I think uh, that's probably here as well. If the focus is on that external uh, price or reward or whatever, mm -hmm. then you are not doing your best. But if the focus is on doing the best, and you're doing your best. You will, you might win, yeah. yeah. So the causality is the proper way, <laughs> in a sense, mm -hmm. not the upside down mm -hmm. causality, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a very good point. Um, all right, so the next one is, what is metagaming and how is it a problem for serious games for health? So? Cheating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, finding weaknesses or loopholes in the system and you mm -hmm. use them to your advantage. Mm -hmm. yeah. so Didn't yeah. you mention with the drawings that those kids made that they were like, drawing many drawings? Yeah, they more. Wanted more That's right. So they yeah. realized that uh, they could just produce loads exactly. of stuff. That's Even right. though the quality was actually low. Yeah. So that's kind of a way of, see, even kids can... Game the system, system. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, the, in the third paper, he talks a little bit about that as well. Uh, he talks about this category of, of cheaters in games yeah. who have the pleasure of actually gaming the system. So the game for them is to game the, the game. Uh, so... Is metagaming cheating? <laughs> it can be, but not necessarily. It can be, but not necessarily. I mean, if, let's say you play basketball and make a foul, mm -hmm. uh, that's metagaming. Mm -hmm. and in order to, let's say, stop... Uh, yeah, it's called the opponent scoring. Yeah. yeah. That's meta game, but is it cheating? It can be a way of being uh, <laughs> being smart about the system or uh, navigating think... within the game to play the system in a way that others didn't think of and it's not really cheating, but Yeah, yeah, I mean yeah, in in most of the cases, yeah, it's cheating, but Main sports games are built on top of meta gaming. Mm. Football, basketball. If there wasn't meta gaming in those sports, I mean, can, can you imagine football without any fouls or or basketball without any fouls? And it would be nothing. You should get the users to understand. You should do it the proper way because this is you get actual benefits from the way. So sure you can game the system and game games, mm -hmm. but your health will suffer from it. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. uh, it's yes. not about the points, it's about you, right? So again, yeah. I think it's it's more serious in serious games for game. Yeah. For example, if you have one of those um, uh, you know, there's like photocracy and all these sites. Mm -hmm. You could basically log these amazing workouts and get all these points and levels and all that, but <laughs> you wouldn't really gain anything. Exactly. So you, maybe people need to just motivate themselves a bit and do it the way they're supposed to. 
Yeah, I think it's the same point as um, Runa was saying before. If you turn the objectives that you're competing with yourself, mm -hmm. then the meta gaming ceases to be a problem because you have no benefits cheating yourself. Like how you know, if instead of running I cycled and I clocked you know kilometers, then I mean, what's the point? I can't cheat myself. Mm -hmm. I can win with my friends if I'm competing with them about how many points I have. Mm -hmm. Then it makes sense. But if I'm just cold, well, sometimes we cheat <laughs> in ourselves as well. <laughs> <laughs> we might, really, yeah. yeah. The difference is you know that you didn't really earn it, and it, exactly. it probably won't feel as good. So exactly. That's right. Mm -hmm. So if you earn it the, the honest way, you, you will feel better. Uh, so maybe, again, turning the motivators to be more aligned with your interesting motivation and comparing yourself to yourself mm -hmm. is the way to kind of overcome some of the limitations. Um, so what are the implications for researchers working in games for health concerning the effect of extrinsic motivation on intrinsic motivation? <laughs> yeah, again, same, same line of questioning. <laughs> yeah. It is something to really keep in mind if you're making new games for health, because if you make a game that only works when they play it. You probably want to create some sort of change for people mm -hmm. that makes them uh, receive a healthy lifestyle or something uh, for a long time. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's something that's interesting to keep in mind. Yeah, I also think um, sometimes, especially with with games for health or some some sports games. It's more about your abilities, not about your score. So you, for example, try to train yourself to be able to achieve something. And in some other games, it's the same. So you kind of get, um, acquiring a skill. And the points are a reflection of that skill that you have, but they are not the goal. The goal is the skill itself. So if somebody asks you, oh, yeah, can you show me, then you can demonstrate that skill which you acquired. And then the points are sort of a reflection of, of where you are. Um, it's um, it's not so if you cheated and you got a high score, you still lack that ability and you kind of missed missed that. Um, you can't repeat it. Uh, so if if something is based on um, one off thing, then it's more likely to be gamed or people can cheat. But if based on some repetitive abilities that you're acquiring, then um, yeah, people will may not have the incentive to to cheat or yeah. And what are the ethical issues for games for health? Um, yeah, that's the tough one. <laughs> I don't touch on some of these things with the um, motivations. If we discussed it a little bit with the time to eat, mm. uh, if it's uh, really ethical to use these kind of extrinsic uh, uh, motivators for health games, is it always the right thing to do? Yeah, that um, to promote that kind of motivation. Mm. There, there are many questions in here. So one one is about the playing with the intrinsic and extrinsic motivators because you, the game may inadvertently kill some of the intrinsic motivators that people might have if, if the game is done not in a, in a correct way. The other one is what is the main objective of the game? So if the main objective of the game is to keep people playing it, then it may not be aligned with the personal benefits people might have. Um, so, you know, the, the, the major objective of Facebook is for you to be on Facebook. It's not for you to have any so social benefits. It's for you to get hooked and be there as long as you can and spend as much time there. That's the main objective, right? So it's not perfectly aligned with your personal objectives. Um, so then there is the ethical issue of when you're designing games for health of, of where the, those boundaries are, uh, of how 
you know, what are the primary objectives and what are the side effects of those objectives. So then, yeah, it, it is a matter of, of defining the proper ethical framework around it. Um, and also, um, oh, perhaps if you are not a health professional, giving out health advice. Mm. So, um, we don't know how much you can be allowed to do that, but... Uh, Fortunately, not much. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually regulated. Um, but yeah, there is a number of apps which sort of um, go a little bit under the radar because they claim to be well-being apps, so they don't have to be properly certified and so on. Um, Some things are probably more uh, dangerous, but easier to do than others. Mm. If you are promoting some sort of eating or something. Yeah. But it, th this one is quite a big and open problem uh, or area. Right, so gains for education. How did you like that paper? So what are the main um, differences between those three categories? There were two questions around that, that topic. So th those got merged into a, a single question. What are the key differences between a game, a simulation, and an edutainment? I feel like questions can go very Yeah. <laughs> they are. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty much, yeah. <laughs> they are pretty, pretty, pretty ready to be merged as well, yeah. It should be, yeah, it should be merged. So? According to the author? Or? <laughs> Both, according to the author and according to your own uh, Views? To the author, games and simulation are similar. Serious <laughs> 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 games can be a part of entertainment, <laughs> but entertainment mm, doesn't have to be a game. <laughs> I feel like entertainment is more of a broader category that can consist of many things. I think I think I can agree with you. I think he was trying to say, and I think that's right, that entertainment is trying to make uh, learning more fun, and they typically focus on drill and practice exercises. So it's not into the more deeper reflection and synthesis and all these things. So it's more on the Drill and practice. That's the easy thing to do. You can drill math skills and, and various skills. And, and that was the saying is that uh, he's trying to say is that the serious games they try to lift that focus off. They're not just drilling uh, knowledge or skills. They're trying to get the student more involved into the reflection. That's typically not the purpose of entertainment. Because entertainment just going to make it. Much more fun to do the drilling. Mm -hmm. uh, what about you know that paper where about the uh, literature thought players theory? Well, there was no game stuff that, but mm. we kind of call that entertainment. Yeah. 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 And, uh, but it wasn't really much drilling of the uh, facts there. They were sort of um, towards the understanding of this. Yeah, they were trying to understand the impact mm. of chaos. So it's it more like a Simulation, visualization, yeah. project, and a gaming yeah, project. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the purpose was still, I think, to yeah, isolate it. It's to, to try to understand the phenomenon, not necessarily the direct effects of the problems. I think it's still at that low level. But, but that, that's good thing, more than just the drill. More question as well. I mean, kind of really depends what you mean by simulation. Are they talking about stuff? 
that aren't quite games or <laughs> running a simulation or running a simulation desktop or something like that. Mm. There's quite a big difference. <laughs> I mean, if you have a simulation, it doesn't really have, you know, main conditions or mm -hmm. game characteristics. Yeah. But they are kind of similar. But if you're looking at other kinds of simulations, they're not similar. Yeah, so some, some things were not kind of definitely defined. Um, for, for us, uh, as game designers, games have certain characteristics, and then things which don't have those characteristics are not games, typically. So then you can say, oh, yeah, that those, this was a simulation, or this was a edutainment. Like, if you have some short video educating about addition, that wouldn't be a game. That would be edutainment, maybe. Uh, so it's, it's a little bit difficult to, to clearly, yeah specify those those things based on the on that single article um, right so then the second question is uh, what are the choice characteristics or the, the kinds of the choices and then the characteristics which uh, they didn't really change the game in any way, but allows the player to what, customize and do something that makes them uh, personalized more. more to the game, so just uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, how that your avatar does a new look, or choosing actions in games, or all, all kinds of things that don't really matter, but you feel like you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the, the difference between strategic choice and tactical choice mm -hmm. are kind of blurry. That's in real life as well. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I think so strategic. Yeah, strategic. That's, that's a little bit blurry. Yeah. Because you have this medium. <laughs> because the yeah. strategic. Um, uh, choices. Well, the way I see it, there's those things you can do beforehand before you actually do things, such as um, choosing skills to improve stats or um, what you, what, the difficulty of the game. Mm. These things, these choices you make before you actually you know, go out to battle or something. And uh, but it will change some of the gameplay. What's the tactical? Is what, for example, when you are, okay, I'm just going to use this uh, battle scenario, you yeah. choose what kind of skill you choose to use at that specific moment. Mm. Uh, or um, if there are uh, like bad stories, or where, which uh, thing you choose, or uh, if you're in a role playing game, what kind of um, dialogue you choose, or what. Uh, they are related, but. There's some sort of uh, difference to it. The strategic one made me think about all the, for example, uh, talent trees in various games, and you will spend loads of time reading up on what will be the best setup for my character yeah. before you go out there and, and do the. And, and use that's them, right. And then, the, and then you are you know, choosing what you use. Mm -hmm. That's right. Often they are they are blurred, but yeah, but they are connected. They the connected sense. and they yes. do reinforce each other. Like the the choices of strategy define what tactics you are available to you and so on. And sometimes certain tactical decisions will force you to certain strategies and so on. But yeah. they are you know interrelated. They are not isolated, mm -hmm. but they do kind of live on on slightly two different levels uh, of thinking. But the um, expressive one is very The expressive one itself. is definitely a, a separate category. Yeah, it's much um, isolated from these two. Yeah. But I like uh, the choices were described, but it's easy to, uh, mm -hmm. uh, to recognize that it's uh, thinking of other games that do these things. Mm -hmm. It made a lot of sense. 
No. Even though I think the, the strategic choice and the tactical choice are not so well defined. I mean, the differences between those two are not so well defined. If you just read the, the first sentence, it's actually the same, both of them, with different phrasing. <laughs> so he could demonstrate the differences in more clear way. <laughs> Even though it's a difficult task. Yeah. Yeah, but there were different decisions about how they played. <laughs> Choices that affect the manner of which a game is played. <laughs> yeah. So what else did you like or dislike about the article? I quite liked it. It was interesting. Also, I thought it was a little bit interesting the things he said about fantasy elements in the game. Because mm -hmm. usually you think of fantasy elements as uh, uh, being in this fantasy world with. Elves and trolls and all these things, mm -hmm. but uh, also, but it doesn't have to be that. But, uh, you can add all these. Well, I could say that levels and points in one way are fantasy elements because it's something not it's, real. It's not real. Mm. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, that's just an interesting way to think about it. I was just worried about the contribution of the paper. And since it's a 2010 paper, so it's, yeah, it's a recent one. Mm. And then the game characteristics. Yeah. So, so, I mean, what's the point of all those things? Are kind of out there, are known. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. I mean, okay, uh, what's the different angle here for this subject? Yeah, it's, it was more like a synthesis of, like, yeah, uh, again, a little bit like a position paper. Position yeah. Paper. So it wasn't necessarily bringing anything new, but kind of tidying up and conceptualizing and organizing some of the concepts. Or, uh, or at least the things that he actually, the, the new things that he brought up was lost into, were lost into, you know, the, the review, mm -hmm. and the analysis and stuff. I kind of like the fact that they uh, conclude that serious games are not going to be published on a mm -hmm. And I have behind this kind of truth is there's a lot of people in the last few years trying to create entertainment games or point to there's been a lot of that now. It's kind of ruined the impression I make for many people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't work well. Yeah. It, it doesn't make a good game if you just slap levels or points on exactly. top or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it definitely doesn't make it a game. Even though you may have some game mechanic in the in it. Uh, mm -hmm. All right. So then the final paper, the the most controversial in a sense. Um, so playing research. What are some of the benefits and drawbacks of walkthroughs when you are analyzing a game? He kind of uh, yeah bashed a little bit mm -hmm. uh, researchers doing using walkthroughs and and so on, but. On the other hand, yeah, we don't have time to play all possible games to kind of analyze them. Uh, so that it is a necessary tool which you have to use. Uh, so well, yeah, what are the benefits and drawbacks? What are the main benefits? Of course, you're saving time, but what are the drawbacks? And I was thinking purely in a research um, situation. No, not necessarily. In, in general, yeah. Breaking intrinsic motivation. So a walkthrough can, you know, help you in a 
push your foot up a little bit in the right direction. If there's again, there's um, obviously specific before, at least for the puzzle games that are that sometimes have these really weird puzzles and you really can't figure out what it is, and you can just find that little thing that points you in the right direction, <laughs> like, okay, use this item, and then, okay. and then you can continue mm -hmm. if you're stuck. Um, so they can be helpful like that if you're spending loads of hours trying to figure out what you're missing. Mm. And it can be really frustrating. But um, I think there are more more fun than pro, probably. No, I think depends on the player. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. If it's a researcher, then both of these yeah useful and necessary to, if you're just a casual player. But in a way, it can easily spoil the experience of the yeah. game. It yeah. can spoil direct events, although some uh, walkthroughs are as uh, spoiler-free as possible. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, That's hard but, to but achieve. But also it can take away some of the experience, for example, if a researcher plays through a game and always uses this walkthrough next to them. They won't get the feeling of the difficulty of the game, and mm. it, maybe some things won't be as surprising, and maybe they are left with a different impression of the game. Definitely, yeah. Uh, so it's, uh, mm. I, th yeah. I, I think that's that's exactly what it is. It sort of eliminates the role of the player from the experience. Mm. So normally, a game is the game plus the player. They form a system where this experience is being born. Uh, and by using walkthroughs, you eliminate the player. You, you're left with the bare bones of the game. So if you're a designer or a programmer or a researcher, sometimes that's fine because you just analyze some of the game mechanics or some of the game elements uh, of how certain things were done. But you're not analyzing the experience, definitely, because you have cut it out. If you're playing the game without the walk walkthroughs, then you have, you're building that experience, and then you can analyze it, then you can sort of uh, learn about it. Uh, so if if you don't do that, then you, you can't touch on that part of the of the gameplay, which is the experience which is born from the player playing the game. Uh, but still, I think it's uh, still kind of important to have just play the game as it is. Because you uh, if you do that, you will kind of get this uh, Oh, no, not framework, but this, um, yeah, just the general feeling of how it really works. Mm. And uh, when you are, if you are um, uh, interviewing players and they say this and that about the game, you have much more of an understanding of it. Mm -hmm. so, um, I think if you you're going to read such a game and have people play it. I think it's a good idea to play it in the same way that your subjects will. Mm -hmm. Because you'll have much more of the this, uh, baseline of understanding. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and they both relate to question one. Yeah, it's in a in a way. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, but walkthroughs and uh, watching uh, playthroughs of the game. Mm -hmm. and all that. Well, it can be uh, complementary. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not necessarily a bad thing to use them, but it's uh, I think that it should be a combination. Yeah, and it, and also he talks a little bit about the the audience of who is doing it. So as as he was saying, if it's a designer or programmer doing it, it's a little bit different. But if it's uh, if the whole point is about the experience, then you you have to play the game yourself. Uh, otherwise, you will not be able to form an opinion about the experience without experiencing it yourself. Um, so what are the the main three ways of acquiring knowledge about the game? 
first one is uh, well, mm -hmm. and getting an understanding of the mechanics, mm -hmm. design, and everything involved in developing the game. And the second way was you observe other uh, people play the game, mm -hmm. interview them, talk to them, look at how they play, review with them, and the third one is to actually play the game. Mm -hmm. It's similar with with other media like films. So, yeah. if you were uh, if you read the screen screenplay for a film and you've seen the shots and if you've talked with the director and so on and then at the end you watch the experience will be completely different to you watching the film kind of with experiencing the experience and then analyzing it uh, later. Um, it's easier to dissect the game mechanics and all those elements if you follow the the other two methods. But for the experience itself, yeah, you will. You can't have it without the, the play. In one way, I'm a bit surprised that it's even being discussed. You know, should we or should we not play those games? Because <laughs> well, if you're thinking about yeah, in some uh, movies or books that uh, you can't talk about them without having read it or, or watched it, it yes. yeah. <laughs> so. If you are going to research a specific game or something, it's kind of given. You know, you know, you don't have. I don't think you need to be a really good or a, you would an think elite so. player, but uh, some, you can't. Some things you just can't explain with just words or uh, watching. You have to do it. But I think this is very completely different field of research. Mm. So, so I think what we'll uh, what I'm sensing here is that the question is whether you're going to have a, a social sciences approach, which is trying to look at things from a distance, not being too involved, because then you get into action research and these things. Mm. But, uh, but can you really do that? That's another thing that is this question. Can you really, on a distance, look at it, or should you dive yourself into it? And if you do, then it's more, as you say, more like literature research. That's mm. more like you uh, really need to be. Experiencing, but then it's not as researchable because the subjective part is much stronger. That's right. You get into the That's right. It's kind of the herbs or the papers that you're trying to establish. Yeah. To, to balance the between these two. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And yeah, the, the whole paper is, I think, about that. It's a, about the social scientist versus literature approach to the to games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he was trying to do it with both, so finally, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, that, I I kind of liked that one the most. Like it was the the most challenging in a sense to to deep to go into areas which we normally don't think uh, of how it is done. Um, and I I thought yeah he he was sort of touching on on some difficult questions in in general uh, as a field. Um, Interesting experience. Or that he got to understand what was hidden in the, in the future and made him lose the interest totally. Oh, yes. <laughs> but you know, I, 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 mean, I, mean, I, if I you, if you, Yeah, I mean, if you knew what the answer was, but in this case, you just knew that there was a route, but that in itself, the route is... Uh, yeah. Yeah, but I don't really understand yeah. that. If there's, if I, for example, I could imagine what, if I was looking at this walkthrough, mm -hmm. and I saw all these things listed, and if I, I, I really feel like I have to do everything if I'm doing something. And if I know about everything, I really feel like I have to do it. And if I don't, it's, there's no point. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, it, it can really be challenging to the experience. Yeah, because uh, I think it, it, 
It's part of the experience. Surprise. Yeah. Surprise. Surprise is eliminated. Yeah. The sense of unknown, sense of exploration, and all of those things you were talking about before. Yeah. And that's why I personally don't really like these open world games because there's so much of it that really annoys me. <laughs> I want to find everything, but what if I don't? <laughs> Yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. In a way, I hate it. Where, so where to go? <laughs> no, I actually prefer some slightly more linear games. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, let's have a look at the next week. next week first. Yes, so next week is Game Metrics. Yeah, I, I was a bit surprised because I thought we were going into the. Uh, Finding the papers that uh, you guys came up with, but obviously we have one more week. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Metrics first, so that's fine. We could reorder things. No, I think. But yeah, I think it's good uh, to do this first, and then it gives you a little bit more time. I don't know if any of you have any papers ready to suggest. I don't have. I haven't received any. I haven't. Yeah, got any questions neither. So, so I think we'll, we'll keep but this one then till uh, till next time. To try to have three papers mm -hmm. of mine. Uh, suggestions, papers that you think are relevant, relevant for your project and that you think you would like to, to talk about. And then we'll uh, look at them and you choose one for each one of you. And we line up over the next two. Yeah. But I think that uh, in week seven, as you were saying, in week seven, I don't think there could be any papers because. Uh, Week after next week, we'll you, we have the uh, deadline for those uh, reports. Yeah. So we need to know what you are planning on doing in the project and how far you've come and uh, the status and, and the plans. So we have. need to spend so that's gonna take a time class time on that. Yeah. So then the, the papers will be the in two weeks' time. Yeah. So as, you're, as you're preparing, it's a good idea to start uh, finding papers and those titles for us. Yeah. Decent. Yeah. In, in terms of uh, relevant. Discussion. Relevant. Yeah. <laughs> Not in the necessary in terms of quality. No. <laughs> All right. So for next week, um, maybe I I should check who hasn't. Um, you haven't talked yet, yeah. So you may need to sign up for one of the articles. <laughs> <laughs> I would think. And do you remember who else didn't talk? Uh, I don't remember his name. There was one student last week. Who came for the first time? Peter. Peter. Okay. Yeah. So we might have uh, you and Peter then talking next week. You have a preference? Any preference? Okay. All right. So I will pencil you in. <laughs> it is a little bit uh, blind date then <laughs> with yeah What's Peter's uh, surname? Can you, can you see? Or don't you have access to it? Yeah, I will, I will check it. Oh, 
or is it okay? Yeah, I think he did. Uh, yeah. Right. Christian? Yeah, we don't need the username. We know. All right, so those two papers are sorted for next week. And in terms of projects, You haven't seen whom? I think he was he sent an email yesterday saying that he was saying that he might not. Maybe he's been basically been working 10, 12, 14 right. hours yeah. days because we're supposed to be programming the entire game right. and with you know custom camera and everything. Do you have uh, a working title for your for your game? It is already in there. You already put it in. It's uh, developed in the number six. Oh perfect. Yeah, no, I hear yeah. if he, because he sent an email saying that he didn't think he was part of the group, that would be a big contributing. I was saying that he... I mean, he, he was there, he's been the one in all the sessions we've had. Uh, Who is that one? This one? No, no. Very second to the bottom. Honey. Um, is that Harry? Harry, oh, yeah, Harry, Harry, sorry. Yeah. So currently it's me, Thomas, and Henry, and there's James are uh, so I see. Because it's yeah, we need the development part has to be finished by February twenty first. Yeah. So that's a question mark for Harry. Oh I kinda of want to be in on it, but I don't know. I see. All right, but you three are kind of well into the project, and you work with Shida. You have all the yeah, equipment. Yeah. No, yeah, no. We've we kind of done some parts of it. We've done the automated script for the latest example. So we've done. Uh, yesterday we were 3,700 radio spectral measurements, so mm -hmm. it's going to run 5,760. Mm -hmm. We started Friday, taking well and forever. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, we've done quite a lot of stuff already. And we kind of need to, when it's supposed to be done by the 21st of February, because we need to be beta testing for a week, and then they're going to have it. Uh, Design center for Mark to get with data. Yeah. And then she has to write her thesis that's for due in April. Yes. We need to get it done now. Yeah. Yeah, that's so good. So, the development part is going to be done pretty early. And we have all the data and stuff that we can talk about for mm -hmm. you know, reform later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, how about the others? Hane, what what are you doing? You didn't see my well, you didn't ah, yeah, I, see I've seen my email. I've Simon seen your email, said, yes. Uh, Simon said that's okay. Yes. Yeah, so that's fine. I think that would be perfectly fine project, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I thought also that it might be useful for you to ask. So it's trying to find out from the literature of what the state of the art is based on the literature, but also informally checking if that's the actual state of the art. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we, we, you know, you will probably not get to know any secrets, but at least kind of validation that yes, they're using it or no, they're using yeah, completely they different things. What they are actually doing now, uh, but also just you know, well, um, some sort of a paper. Already out there. Mm -hmm. uh, then research. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the other thought I had was that it might turn out to be again a par, a bit of a taxonomy paper of what. Uh, I the, could check if there are any little, um, serious war games mm. taxonomies existing. It would be interesting. I yeah. was thinking about it if there is something that exists. Because there will be probably different systems for like teaching and different for um, mm. simulations and for practice and so on. So you, I'm not sure whether you will find a taxonomy which will fit or whether you will have to propose something yeah. to discuss that area which you will be researching. Okay. Yeah. yeah um, but yeah, you will have to do a little bit of a preliminary reading. So I don't know the military area myself. Uh, yeah. I haven't. I don't know too much about it, but it's, uh, it's interesting. No. Okay, so you is it? You I will probably need to edit. I haven't added it because I well, didn't make it much for it. So no, no worries. Yeah. I can add something. Sounds good. So, how about you guys? I think I will choose the third one, assessment of game-based learning. Research three, assessment of game-based learning. Mm -hmm. I think it is interesting. What do you think? This one. Mm -hmm. I think assessment is definitely an interesting. I don't know how much has been published, so I feel to review literature. It means that there you should find some literature that actually can review. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know how much I've been written, but it's an interesting, interesting uh, issue. Definitely. Yeah. Have you seen the papers? Um, not right now. I think I will start with. Yeah. And if you see that if there aren't too many, then you might need to refocus a little bit. Or expand it a little bit. Yeah. yeah. But again, it's sort of you will have to do some preliminary investigations to ensure that you have enough mm -hmm. literature to, to do this this one. Mm -hmm. And otherwise you will sort of formulate it a little bit wider to mm -hmm. be more inclusive. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess. Okay. Okay. And Vlad? I prefer a first research project that can elements of the tutorials. Research project is the first one. Yeah. Uh, analysis of the tutorials in terms of the educational approach. Right. So that one is together with Simon. So he has he has a, a small prototype of a game for them. Um, uh, medical recommendations based on some population statistics <laughs> uh, and you will probably be working with him and he has the external uh, partner who was interested in having that game organized so it will involve some coding in JavaScript and doing some hands-on work so it will not be exclusively reading articles it will be actually doing a game 
Uh, and, and Simon has a prototype ready. It's not really a game yet, but it has m most of the GUI elements already sort of sorted. Uh, so if you're interested and if you want to do some JavaScript, that's probably perfect. Uh, so now I should try it to Simon. So if if you do want to do this one, um, we no, will. Not this one. I mean a research project you're talking about. Ah, uh, sorry, sorry, research project one. Yeah. Uh, tutorials, analysis of game tutorials in terms of the educational approach. That's again with with that's. So forget what I just said about the previous one. <laughs> that one is also with Simon. Um, and it's about how the tutorials are done. It's not nothing. You will not be coding anything. You will be reading and doing analysis. But he also did some work already uh, in terms of uh, tutorials for games, how to do tutorials for games. So I can write to Simon right now and ask about the first development project and the first uh, research project and just. You could, yes, yeah. if you if you like both. I, I'm interested yeah. in both, yeah. yeah. Okay. So if 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 it is the second one, um, I don't have much experience myself, so you will be probably working with Simon more more. Okay. If you choose this first one from the development, we can get the current code base from Simon, and I know more about the project, so I can work here with you, and we can work remotely with Simon together. Um, with, with this tutorial one, I he did more research. I don't know that much, so okay. Simon will be more. If I do, for example, research project, which result should be achieved in the end of this research project? We should provide some new methods or what? It depends. It, in in your case, it might be some recommendations of how to do. Tutorials effect, eff, effectively, uh, or it can be a state of the art review in a form of a report uh, from literature review or some other review. Yeah. So the outcome of this one will be more, more, you know, it will be a report with some recommendations possibly. The outcome of that one will be a game plus a report for that game. Uh, yeah. Okay, and nobody else is here, so we cannot really talk with the others. <laughs> so you guys are kind of fine, I guess. Uh, you should email Simon. Uh, for oh. development, you can go together, for example, with somebody. Yes, yes. so for development project, it might be better to have a team of two, maybe, than doing it on your own. Uh, so if you want to team up with somebody, uh, you could. And it, it is JavaScript. Uh, with some vector graphics for doing some of the graphical things, yeah. Those those research projects are probably single people projects. It's difficult to to do because the outcome is a report, and doing a collaborative work on a report is, is actually not that easy. Um, Doing collaborative work on a development project, yeah, that makes more sense. You can split tasks and you can organize yourself easier. Um, yeah. So like these guys are doing uh, three of them, and it's you can build a bigger thing if you have more more people involved. Um, yeah, our thing is supposed to be. Yeah. It has to be relatively polished. Yeah. It shouldn't right. crash <laughs> and so on. <laughs> yeah. If and I mean, it does say that it has some bugs and this, but uh, it's also like very minor and stuff that like, oh look here I can call the create that connect. <laughs> I can use the button, but we're supposed to use camera tracking because it's quite far away from that. <laughs> and, um, a lot of work. Mm -hmm. That's good. Makes it interesting. Yeah, it's very, very interesting. It's a lot of work with, but it takes a lot of work. <laughs> I dreamt of a lot of work. Nightmares about deadlines. Yeah.
somehow it needs to be linked to serious gaming at some point. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's the problem with sharp projects. You get so, well, so overwhelmed by all. Well, serious game though. Yeah, we have it. But the, the the trick is that you spend eighty percent on the product quality. That doesn't help you much in understanding serious gaming. It's more about product development, and uh, so that's the same with master thesis. Mm. Master thesis should not be developed something ready, any system or, or software, or anything, because you're going to spend eighty percent of the time to actually finalize it, do the wrap up, which doesn't give you much learning uh, at all. And, and the purpose of master thesis and the purpose of this project is to learn from the project, and ideally about serious games, not about the development itself, but for the software. But now. Well, you will be able to link it up somehow. There is, yeah, there is a gray area somewhere oh, in between. Okay. But if you guys are doing the final product, which has to be deployed and used, that that, that puts more stress on the fine tuning of the product, which normally you wouldn't have to do. Like you would stop at the proof of concept, and that would be it. Uh, By the time you're ready to write the report, you're too tired to write the good report. <laughs> well, I mean, your report, final report is supposed to be. <coughs> Mm. Yes. You should have enough time to do some, yeah, some research on top of that. Yeah. So that well, that is a good thing. We are proven the idea, so there's nothing. So yeah. but just keep in mind that we need to focus on the uh, whatever outcome that's the most productive in terms of serious game. Yeah. And we also talk to Shida, which is you know the and all the data she gets. You know, Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. So I think that's it for today.